Hi everyone and welcome to part two of Mental Health First Aid with Shiatsu. Um, thank you for tuning in. We've got Diana on the chat, just like to say hello and we'll get straight on. We've got a very packed um, evening. You notice I've got my mat here so I can lie down very easily and still be in shot um, because we're going to be doing lots of practical work today on breathing. So I hope you enjoy that. I'm just going to start running the, chat, the slides and um, here we go. So this is part two and I thought we'd just spend the whole of this webinar going deeper into breathing and we're going to be working on ourselves this week and next week we're going to be applying it in a treatment situation. We'll, we'll be fleshing out and developing the protocol that we developed last week. So here's the program. We're going to do a quick review of last uh, week and just find out whether you were here or whether you watched the recording. Um, just to have a look at the protocol that we're setting up um, to work with mental health first aiders. And then we're going to go deeper into breathing. We're going to look at the anatomy of belly breathing. We're going to do some experiments ourselves. Then we're going to look at low abdominal breathing, the Dantian breathing, how that differs from just basic belly breathing. We're going to go into polyvagal theory as well and the breath because we had some questions last week that I'd like to go a little bit deeper into this week. Um, and then I'd like to go into the theory and practice of how breathing relates to different elements and different meridians and look at some of the most important acupressure points that are used locally to assist breathing. So we've got uh, a really packed hour ahead of us. Um, so let's just find out if you were here last week um, and then um, we can obviously set it from there. So have you seen part one? I'm going to share that with you now. I just want to know if you actually attended live last week or whether you saw the recording or whether this was your first webinar of this series. Just have a quick look. Okay, so most of you were here last week. That's great. And all you saw the recording. Um, if you didn't watch last, if you ha haven't seen last week, I really recommend it. We did cover a huge amount of ground. It's on YouTube and it's also on New Energy Work um, in the membership areas. Uh, but I'll quickly just run through what we did. Um, we looked at uh, the mental health in the workplace. We looked at an amazing report called the Deliot Report, which had lots of really interesting information about um, mental health and the workplace and some very interesting things about ROI, which is return on investment. In other words, how much money businesses will get back if they invest in mental health. And we looked at various different aspects of that. We also looked at what mental first health first aid is, how it developed in Australia and how it's spread worldwide. There are now 3 million people worldwide who are trained as mental health first aiders. And then we looked at this pilot case study, which kicked the whole webinar series off, which was I was invited to present or to have a um, to have a stall and to kind of like join in a big launch of a whole mental health strategy at Norwich City Council just up the road here. And so what I've done is uh, worked with Norwich City Council and I've developed a protocol. Well, we are developing a protocol. They're still working on it. Um, and we've put a pilot uh, project forwards, um, which we shared last week. If you didn't get any of those resources, they are actually online now. They're all loaded up for you. So you can download them from New Energy Work um, in the mental health first aid section. So have a quick look at that. If you can, if you if you missed last week, have a look through it or watch the YouTube video. OK, so part of the protocol um, was developing breathing. So I just wanted to check in, just see how you would rate your knowledge and skills in the process of breathing. That's in your own practice and also working with clients, checking their breathing, uh, helping them with their uh, with the breathing patterns and why you might want to do that. We'll go into later. Um, but let me just run that poll. So let's see, how would you rate your knowledge and skills uh, in the process of breathing? Here we go. So let's just see whether you feel expert, good, neutral, or not sure. Okay, look at that. We've got most of you, we've got about a fifth of you going uh, neutral or very, maybe you're just very modest. Um, about, yeah, about 20% neutral and not sure. Okay, most of you feel pretty good, and only one person says they're an expert, considers them an expert, but that's uh, that's pretty good. Okay, so we're going to 
we should be able to get through everything that I've got planned then, um, if you're fairly familiar with, with uh, breathing. But let's see how far we can go and how deep we can get in the next hour. Okay, so we're going to start off with um, belly breathing, okay, or sometimes called diaphragm breathing, um, but it's probably the most mainstream uh, aspect of breathing. You'll see it everywhere, and I'll show you some places that I found it later on in the webinar. But we're going to do some experiments with this, um, and we're going to. I've got some polls ready to check in with you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a an exercise. And what we're going to do is we're going to. You can sit up or you can lie, and all I'm going to get you to do is without forcing it, without trying to do anything, you know, do any exercise or anything. I just like you to take a deep breath and track where that breath goes and see if you can sense where the lowest part of your in-breath movement goes to. Where does it go to? Okay, and I'm going to do it with you um, and we can, you can try out, see how you are, how you get on. So as I say, you can do this uh, sitting if you like, if you don't want, if you've got nowhere to lie down. I'm going to lie down. It's actually quite often done in a lying down position, and especially when you work with clients, you're going to be working with them properly on the futon um, uh, as they're being treated. And we'll show you a little bit more, well, definitely a lot more next week when we put it all together um, into an actual session. So let's just practice it lying down if you want to do this. And this is just to test out without trying to change our breathing, just where the lowest part of our breath movement goes to. Okay, and uh, let's just see. So we're just going to just relax a little bit, okay? Not really um, concentrating on anything particular. I'm just going to take a deep breath in. Okay, and then breathe out. Okay, and I know, I know where the lowest point of my breathing was. Do you want to do it one more time just to check? Okay, so we're just going to take a normal breath in. We're not going to do any particular breathing pattern. We're just going to breathe in as normally as we can. And then breathe out. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to run a poll now. And the poll is going to be, um, where was the lowest part where did the lowest part of your in-breath movement go to okay and here are the options was it here in the upper lungs was it down into the lower part of the lungs did you feel it in the diaphragm area the upper abdomen or the lower abdomen okay so that's the um they're the options so was it in the upper breath, upper chest the lower lungs around the diaphragm that's here underneath the rib cage here uh, or what did it go as far as the upper abdomen or the lower abdomen? Okay, and I've got the pole ready for you right here. And I'm going to run the pole now. Let's just see how we did as a group uh, with that just a simple exercise, just assessing. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. So where was the lowest part of your, uh, your in-breath movement? Where did it go to? We'll also get an idea of, um, roughly where our breathing pattern as a group is. And look at that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> We've got one person that admitted it was in the upper lungs. I must say, when I did it without doing any particular breathing focus, I got about down to the lower lungs and diaphragm for me. But look at this. We've got 62% of you feeling it all the way down to lower abdomen. And that's just because you're shiatsu practitioners and you probably practice a lot of lower abdominal breathing, dantian breathing, which will influence the way that you breathe. And then we're going to do more on that later. Okay, so um, let's just have a quick look at the actual anatomy of the breathing. So I'm sure you're familiar with this, but it's worth knowing exactly what happens physiologically, especially when we start doing the Dantian breathing, and especially when we start linking it with the polyvagal theory, which is what we're going to do a little bit later on. Okay, so you can see from this chart here that the main thing, the main thing to remember is that the diaphragm actually expands as you breathe in. So it pushes downwards. What that can ha what can, can happen with that is that the abdomen, well, what should happen if the diaphragm really extends downwards, 
is that the uh, di um, the abdominal area should move outwards. Now, there's, if you look in the literature, there's a lot of um, discussion about why people don't do that. Some of it is a kind of cultural thing about having a flat stomach, um, not wanting to have like a, a rounded stomach, things like that. Um, even developing the abdominal muscles, overdeveloping the abdominal muscles can sometimes do that, can um, kind of like stop the abdomen expanding properly. And then of course, stress itself is one big factor which causes the uh, breathing to be really high in the body. Okay, so with a full belly breathing, the diaphragm contracts and it moves downwards. It's really important to remember that it's actually contracting as it moves downwards. So it's actually in an active phase as it moves downwards. Air gets pulled into the lungs because obviously there's a bigger uh, cavity there and pressure is reduced and the abdomen expands. As we exhale, the diaphragm relaxes and re returns back to its dome shape, as you can see in the diagram. Okay, and then obviously the air gets pushed out because the diaphragm is relaxing. So it's an active movement when we breathe in and a relaxation of the diaphragm moving upwards as we breathe out. So I just thought we would, before we do anything fancy, <laughs> which is we're gonna go further into polyvagal theory and further into Dantian breathing, I thought, especially for people like me who've only got down as far as the ab, uh, diaphragm, I thought we could just experience basic belly breathing um, so what we're going to do is we're going to line our back. We're just going to do a few um, breaths. I got this exercise actually from Cindy Engel's blog, um, and I've got some links with that that I can share with you later on. Um, there's a great blog there from a few years ago on Cindy Engel's website um, about breathing, and there's a fascinating link to it, which I've got some more material um, um, linked to this webinar a little bit later on, okay? So what we do with basic belly breathing, we're, we're thinking about it in anatomical terms at the moment. Okay, let's just think purely anatomically. Let's see if we can get an experience of that, um, of that uh, diaphragm um, contracting and allowing the whole abdomen to expand. Okay, we're just gonna do that just for a few moments um, because I can see that in actual fact, we've got 60% of you, 63%, already getting it down to the lower abdomen so we won't spend too long on this okay so here we go we just do this exercise and then we'll move on okay so practicing basic belly breathing uh, diaphragmic breathing focusing on the diaphragm relaxing the abdominal muscles okay we're breathing in We're relaxing all of this area here and allowing it to expand. And in fact, you can actually place your hands on here and make sure that the whole thing is expanding. Okay. And then we're breathing out, letting it relax. Okay. And we're feeling that going in. Okay. So let's just do that a few more times to see if I can get this movement right down here into the lower abdomen. Okay. So here we go. Breathing in. And breathing out. Okay, and then breathing in. Okay, so that's basic belly breathing. You'll see that everywhere, um, all over the internet. It's a really basic breathing technique and it's designed to do many things. The main thing is to stop shallow breathing in the upper part of the chest, which is related to like a stress pattern breathing. Okay. Now, obviously, as Shiatsu practitioners, we're much more aware of more sophisticated uh, breathing uh, patterns. And that is the Dantian breathing, okay, which is what we're all taught in the um, right in the beginning of shiatsu training and that's why i'm sure we've got such a big scoring of people um, with breath movement going really low down however dantian's breathing is much more sophisticated than just simple belly breathing for many different reasons okay 
And what I thought we'd do is before we go into in detail, let's do another experiment, okay? What we're gonna do in this experiment is we're going to take key in with the breath. And the way we can do that is by using kind of like a guided imagery thing. So we're gonna imagine light or warmth coming in with the breath and we're gonna track it internally. We're gonna bring it down into the lower abdomen for a few seconds and then we're gonna exhale what I'd like you to do this time is I'd like you to track what happens to the key in your lower abdomen when you exhale, okay? So just see what happens. We're going to do three breaths, okay? Three um, Dantian breaths. Just want you to check and see what happens to the key, okay? So let's go. I've got a pole ready and waiting, but I'm not going to tell you what the pole uh, options are at this stage. I'd like to just do it as a completely clean exercise if that's possible. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go back into the uh, reclining position. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've li laid down quite so much in any webinar beforehand, uh, before this one. But anyway, we're going to lie down. You can place your hand if you want over CB4 and CB3, over the low, lower Dantian if you would want to do that, or you can just place your hands to the side. And just imagine this area here. We're going to bring the key into that area here and uh, see what happens. Okay, I'll just talk you through it. So if you just relax. Okay. Now we're going to use guided visualization. We're going to imagine chi or light or energy or warmth coming in with the breath. And we're going to imagine it going down into the Dantian. And then we're holding it there for a few seconds and then we're going to breathe out and I want you to just without directing it in any way, just see what it, where it tends to go as we exhale. Okay, so here we go. Ready? So slow inhalation, breathing in, bring the chi down into the Dantian, low Dantian. Okay, we're going to hold the breath, gather it there. Okay, and then breathe out. Okay, let's do it two more times and then I'm gonna run the pole, okay? So just to repeat, we bring the light, imaginary light or heat in with the breath down into the lower than 10. Okay, we hold it there and we imagine it gathering around the lower than 10 the light of the energy of the breath. Okay, and then we breathe out. Where does that chi want to go? Which is the direction that it tends to go? Okay, let's just do it one more time, just check, breathing in. Okay, holding it, and breathing out. Okay, right, I've got the pole ready to go. And I'll just show you the options for this one. <laughs> um, okay, did you notice that it tended to go back up and out with the breath? Did you notice that it stayed in the lower abdomen where we placed it? Or did you notice that it sunk down, maybe down lower, down the legs maybe, or into the, yeah, into the legs and the hips? or maybe something else, other, there's the fourth one is other, okay? So I'm gonna run that poll and see where we are. It's poll number four, isn't it? So let me just see if I can find poll four. Here we are, what happens to the key? Here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna run it, where is it gone? Oh, there it is. Yep, here we go, I'm gonna share it, there we go. Okay, did it go up and out with the breath? Did it stay in the lower abdomen? Did it sink lower than the abdomen or other? Have we got anyone voting for that? It doesn't seem to be showing. Sometimes that happens with the polls. No. Okay, I'll find out tomorrow when it, sometimes there's a slight delay on the polls. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's just, um, 
bit delayed. Let's have a look. It's coming through now. Okay, it sinks lower than the abdomen. That's interesting. It goes up with the breath or it goes down. That's really interesting. Look at that. Interesting. Okay, now there's no right or wrong with that, but generally speaking, when we are training our clients to um, trying to maximize the lower abdominal breathing, what we normally do is we try and get it to stay in the lower abdomen. But there is, as many of you noticed, a tendency for it to just rise up out with the breath. And that's something I've noticed a lot when you've got highly stressed people, um, they have real problems keeping it down in, to, in the dantian. It can be useful to sink it even lower down and even have it going down into legs and into the ground, into the feet. And that can be used as a directed thing. And maybe next week we'll show you some of the ways that we can do that. Um, but I just thought that was really interesting. Um, so let's have a look. What I thought we'd do now, let me have a look and see. Yes, this is fascinating. This is actually linked from Cindy's blog, um, uh, the, the, the blog about belly breathing. And um, it's Harvard Medical School. I can't believe Harvard Medical School are, sent, are selling e-books about how to relax using the breathing. That's our job. <laughs> I can't believe Western medicine is totally like into all this stuff now. I mean, we've, we're in a tradition that goes back 5,000 years, but they think they're very excited because they've invented it in the 1970s. If you read the, if you read the link with Harvard Medical School, they claim that one of their scientists discovered how to moderate your nervous system in the 1970s, like it was a new idea, which I thought was pretty funny. But anyway, I think it's really important, like I was saying last week, it's really important for us to really claim that area because we really are the experts in, in, this, type of, um, in this type of work. Um, and, um, and we just really case of applying it and sharing it in a way that's, that's uh, uh, effective, really. But look at this list. This is from the Harvard Medical School. Progressive muscle re relaxation is one of the things. These are things that they say that can be combined with the belly breathing to enhance the relaxation and the regulation of the nervous system. Mindfulness meditation, yoga, tai chi and qigong, repetitive prayer, which is, I thought was interesting, and guided imagery, okay? Now, when I thought about um, my experience of Dantian breathing, I realized that actually all of those five things are actually, can be associated with Dantian breathing. In other words, they're kind of already bolted in in various different ways to Dantian breathing. So it really wasn't, in, it really wasn't invented in the 1970s by Harvard Medical School. It goes back, right back to Qigong, and it's stuff that we've been doing within that tradition for thousands of years. Um, next week, and when we did the practical, I'm going to show you different ways that I've been experimenting with adding these, bolting these different bits into um, the uh, lower dantian breathing and how we can kind of enhance it and strengthen it and also direct it in different ways to regulate the nervous system. But what I thought we'd do is um, I'm going to actually use... Uh, quite a few of these things um, to enhance our uh, lower abdominal breathing. I'd like to just go through it with you and point out a few things in stage one, um, the, um, uh, lower, uh, lower dantian breathing, uh, because what I'd like everyone to experience is I want to exp everyone to experience what 33% of you experienced, which was staying in the lower abdomen. And there's a few things I'd like to point out that we can use for our own practice that's based on Chinese medicine, that's kind of important when we are teaching our clients, especially when we come to next week, when we start doing some one-to-one -one stuff. So let's get back down on the map, and I just wanted to share with you some of these things. What we're gonna do is we're going to bring in mindfulness, obviously with the awareness of the breath. We're gonna do basically some internal Qigong exercises by very gently experimenting with the lower lock. Um, we are not going to go into mantras and prayers yet, although I have actually done quite a bit of that myself in my own practice. I'm sure you probably experimented with things like yourself. And the guided imagery, the key movement, is part of using just a simple um, uh, image of light or chi coming in with the breath. So let's go back onto the mat and just do some low abdominal breathing and bring in a few of the most important things in terms of 
maximizing the containment of the chi as we do the low prolonged breathing. This is not the only way to do it. Uh, there are plenty of other ways that we can do it and we can explore some of them uh, more next week when we do the practical. But I just thought it might be a good experience to do this, uh, starting with the basics. The main thing with the first stage of low dantian breathing is you want to be able to get the clients to contain the chi in the lower abdomen. And basically that means in the lower burner, it means below the navel, around CV4, CV6, but it also means going right the way through into the sacrum. And another really important aspect is the lower lock, which is the, basically the, around the um, first chakra, which is basically you want to contain that to stop the chi leaking out of the lower lock, <laughs> okay? Especially if you have a tendency for the chi to go down, there are techniques where we can direct it down, but that's another thing once we've contained it. Okay, so let's just get the internal energetics of it as clear as we can. You, again, you can either place your hand here or place your hands and just use your focus of your imagination. I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to place my hands over CB4 and CB6, which is just here around the, just below the navel and above the pubic bone. It's just around this area here. Okay. And we'll just do three breaths and see if we can get the chi to start building in the lower than Tim. Okay. And this is how we do it. We keep the, um, the body as relaxed as possible. There's also an emphasis on relaxation as we breathe out. And that again links with the Harvard Medical School list. Okay, so let's just slowly work our way through this. Okay, so first of all, we're just going to relax. We're going to take a nice, easy breath in, bringing the breath in through the nose. And we're going to imagine light or energy from the breath going down into the lower dantian underneath our hands. Okay, but we're going to fill it up right into the back. So what happens is not only do you feel the abdomen moving up, you should feel the sacrum start to spread outwards as the chi goes into the lower, uh, lower back. Okay. Okay, now we imagine that the, it's like a bowl and that takes care of the lower lock. So we imagine that it's a bowl. Some techniques will actually close up the lower lock, even just gently closing the lower lock by just kind of clenching the... Um, muscles underneath, you know, in the around the anus and just holding them slightly. But you can usually do it by just containing, by using imagination to contain that. We've got the light there, okay? And now we breathe out through the mouth. We imagine just the breath comes out and the chi from the breath stays here and gathers into the, in the lower dantian. And as we breathe out, we relax the whole body. Okay, so you can see that basic dantian breathing checks almost all of those um, lists on the Harvard Medical School list. The only thing is we're not doing is we're not putting a mantra in or putting a prayer in, but we can do that. You can do that if you like in your own practice. But let's just get this whole thing down. We've got the guiding imagery of the um, chi coming in. We've got the containment of it. <laughs> We've got it going right into the back which again is not emphasized in normal, regular belly breathing, but it's very important energetically to activate that whole lower dantian. We're containing it in the lower abdomen, we're holding the chi there and we're letting the breath go out. And again, we're using guided imagery and we're using relaxation as we exhale. Okay, so let's try it for a second time. Nice and easy, we're gonna relax, okay? We're breathing in the chi from through the nose. You can imagine coming in from the heavens Okay, we're holding it. See if you can feel it all the way into the sacrum. Contained in a bowl, holding it. Okay, now keep your attention here. Keep the, the uh, chi from the breath in that lower dantian as we breathe out. And we relax as we breathe out. If it goes anywhere, it sinks down slightly down into the pelvic floor and around here. Okay, so let's just do it one more time. We're going to breathe in, bring the chi in. Okay, 
hold it right the way into the back of the sacrum, contain it in a bowl and breathe out. Relax, keeping the chi underneath our hands. Okay, and as we do that, we relax the whole abdominal area as we breathe out. Okay, so there we are. That's the uh, lower dantian, the basic lower dantian breathing, which we're going to develop a little bit more next week. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. We just passed the halfway mark, and it's time to move on to polyvagal theory. Now, I especially put this in because which we had a very good question last week about what do you do if people have got low blood pressure and do you, do you, what kind of breathing pattern do you recommend for them? So we're gonna go into very, very soon. But there's our lower dantian breathing. Making sure that the, we fill up the lower dantian, can you see it's not just in the front of the body, it's right in the center. We want that chi to fill up the whole lower uh, part of the lower cavity. Okay, so now let's move on to breathing and polyvagal theory. And I've got some experiments for you as well to, um, uh, to find out where your polyvagal rhythm is naturally. And again, I'm not going to give you the, any answers. I'm going to just do an experiment with you and see what happens. Got it all lined up here. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is without changing our breathing pattern, we're going to do regular breathing, lying down, Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get you to count by just going internally, just going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, as you breathe in, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or whatever, as you breathe out. And the idea is we're going to find out how long the in-breath is, our normal in-breath, compared to our out-breath, okay? So I'm going to do it with you, okay? And I'm not going to try and influence you at all. We're just going to see, if, we're going to see as a group um, what, you know, how we are with our breathing. There's no right or wrong, but as we'll find out in a minute, um, it does have an effect. The, the um, balance between how long the in-breath is and the out-breath is has an effect. So let's see if we can do this and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to go back into the lying position again. Okay, why don't we do it three times again and we'll just see how it works out, okay? So I'm just gonna get into a normal breathing pattern. Okay, and now we're gonna start counting. Okay, so if I count it out like this, just keep breathing and count how many breaths, how many clicks it takes for your in-breath and how many it takes for your out-breath. Here we go. Have you got it? Okay, hopefully you would have got it now. Um, and of course you can, you, might, you can just, you can probably guess what the poll is. I've got all lined up for us. And that is, as you probably guessed, which best describes the rhythm of your breath? Are they in breath and out breath pretty much the same? Okay. Or is your in breath longer than your out breath? Or is your out breath the longest? Or you're not sure? Okay, hopefully I was clear enough with my clicking and you managed to count it. So we should be good, good to go. So let's find out as a group, um, which, which best describes your rhythm. Um, so were your in and out breath about the same? 
and we will see what we've got. Fascinating. Okay, now that's really interesting. Look at that. That's, we've only got just over a third that are completely balanced uh, in terms of the in breath and the out breath. We've got a biggest, the biggest majority is, which is almost half the out breath is longest. And that's really interesting because a lot of breathing patterns, they tend to do that. And it's a very good reason for that. However, breathing in uh, emphasizing the in-breath also has an energetic action and you may be spontaneously adjusting your nervous system by adjusting your breathing without even realizing it. But when it comes to working with clients, it's really, really useful to understand the relationship between the breathing rhythm and the nervous system, particularly when we're talking about free states. And this brings us back to the question we had last week, which I didn't have time to answer properly as you know, because it was so packed last week. So I thought I'd re re revisit that um, in the polyvagal section, okay? So here we go. Um, basically, this comes from polyvagal theory, and the idea is, is that the um, in-breath is connected to the sympathetic nervous system, and the out-breath is connected to the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, so what that means is that if we elongate the out-breath or we emphasize the out-breath, it tends to calm everything down, it activates the parasympathetic nervous system. And if we activate the in-breath, or we um, focus in on it, or if we make it longer, more obvious, then that tends to stimulate the body system, okay? Now, of course, mostly we tend to use breathing to regulate the nervous system away from the sympathetic nervous system response. Um, and that's certainly all you're gonna see on the Harvard Medical School website because it's mainly due to that, mainly uh, relevant to that. However, it's not as easy as that um, if you're working therapeutically because sometimes you're gonna find that your client that you're working with is in the free state. Now, Remember last week we had this question about um, low blood pressure and a decreased heart rate. And you'll notice that if you look at this slide and you look in the top right hand corner, the parasympathetic nervous system, the dorsal vagal state, which is the emergency state where the body freezes up. You'll notice that what happens is the blood pressure and the heart rate decreases. Now, the thing is, if you're in that state or if the client is in that state, then what you really don't want to do is emphasize the parasympathetic nervous system because it's just going to keep them in the free state. And in actual fact, what they need to do is do the reverse of normal relaxation breathing, which is to emphasize the in-breath and to take them out of that freeze, um, free state. What tends to happen then is it deactivates out of the free state. And sometimes you're going to get um, a reaction in the sense that they're going to feel, uh, they may express emotions and things like that as they come out of the free state. Um, so it's something that, you know, and it's, you need to be uh, just watching out for. I'm sure all of you are very experienced therapists. You can handle that kind of thing when it happens. But it's something to watch out for. Um, and it just shows you that uh, it's not quite as simple as just breathing out slowly as you can, keeping calm. <laughs> because the free state is becoming more and more common as the stress levels are going up. And people are moving out of that red zone, fight and flight zone, into the freeze zone. Once... You can, once you can sense that the client is in the sympathetic nervous system state, in other words, they've got active fight and flight um, activated in their body, um, you'll notice that because the, there'll be an increase in all the body functions and the way they describe how they're feeling. That's when it's good to emphasize elongating the lot, the, the out breath, because that will then deactivate them down from the sympathetic nervous system state down into the ventral vagal system, which is when everything is kind of balanced and everything and grounded and everything. Okay, so I thought it might be interesting for us to, because we've got such an interesting range here in the group of people, uh, of everyone um, doing different breathing patterns, I just thought it'd be really interesting just to practice um, a little bit of actually activating the in-breath and the out-breath, um, and just seeing what happens to our chi overall. 
Now, the thing is, if you happen to be really stressed and you're in the free state, or you suspect you might even be in the free state, then obviously I wouldn't recommend that you do the, ex the long exhalation because you just really don't need that. But I'm just assuming that we're all kind of in a range where we can modify our uh, nervous system by um, working the breath, okay? But don't forget that um, it's really important to realize that the breathing itself, the breathing rhythm itself is directly related to the uh, nervous system. And as such, it's the easiest way that we can help our clients actively manage their nervous system response. And it's something I've been doing a lot of, we've all been doing a lot of that in Shatsi Center, especially since the pandemic, we've been having some extreme cases coming in. Um, and it's something we'll share with you a little bit more next week when we put it all together in the actual practice. So let's, uh, I thought we could just do this experiment. Okay, so this is another experiment, another practical thing for it, which is what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go straight into a, a belly breathing pattern. And we're gonna, first of all, emphasize the in-breath. Um, and we're gonna make it quite extreme. So we're taking a long, very, and we're gonna make noise with, you know, um, by like a yogic uh, breathing so that we can actually make an audible breath. Um, and then we're just gonna relax the out breath and not emphasize it. And we'll just do that five times, okay? And we tune into our energy. Now, what should happen is it should activate um, the sympathetic nervous system. So we should feel more alert, more activated, um, and we might, we might find your heartbeat increases, you might find yourself more aware. And then we're gonna switch to the emphasizing the out breath, which should then deregulate everything, bring the um, body functions down and relax them, okay? But let's just see if we can actually do that and whether we can see uh, we can feel a difference in our overall key and our overall energy body activity um, by doing that. Okay, do you want to try it? Let's try it. Um, I'm going to do it with you. I'm just going to do like five breaths and see what happens. Here we go. So back down to the mat. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to sense my just general level of activity in my body, like my heart rate, a general level of awareness my general feeling of how activated I feel, you know, alert, ready to fight flight. And let's see if we can adjust our body sensations by just by using the breath, okay? So I'm gonna do an audible breath. You can do different types of audible breath. You can slightly close the throat or you can make a noise through the nose, anything just to emphasize the in-breath, okay? And we're gonna make it as long as we can and make and really emphasize it. So it'll be something like this make it as deep as we can. So it'd be something like this. Something like that, okay, so it's inhale. And exhale. Okay, feel that diaphragm activating, going down, opening up the abdomen, feel the breath coming in. Okay, here we go. Two more, here we go. Okay, right, now just check your heartbeat. You may notice a raised heartbeat and just check your level of kind of like readiness and awareness. Just have a look around you. Tune internally to your body functioning. Just see whether it feels more relaxed or more activated. Okay, have you got it? And that's just with five breaths, by the way, okay? So let's do the opposite now. We're gonna take a nice, um, simple in-breath and we're gonna make a really long exhalation. And we're gonna, again, feed in that relaxation response throughout the whole body as we breathe out, okay? Now here we go, ready? So we're gonna breathe in, belly breathing. Okay, and then breathing out through the mouth, making a noise, making it as long as possible, relaxing. Okay, one more to go, breathing in.
three more to go. Okay, two more. Okay, and the last one, breathing in. Okay, very good. So now, just tune into your body energy and just notice if it feels more relaxed now, kind of more deactivated. Check your heartbeat rate. See if it's slowed down. Just generally tune into your whole metabolic situation. Okay, very good. So let's just see whether we managed to do that. That was just with five breaths. I mean, it's hardly anything. Um, okay, it looks like someone like Dinah's shared the polyvagal chart. All the slides but will be available online, by the way, at the end of the um, thing. And you can find it online as well. But thank you very much for that. Um, okay, so here we go. Let's uh, have a look at the poll. Here we go. Um, let's see, I'm gonna run the poll, let's see, here we go. Here we are, poll six. Right, did you feel a change in your key as we did the breathing exercise? Yes, no, or not sure, I'm just gonna run that one. Here we go. Can you feel a change in your key? Yes, no, or not sure. Let's just see how many of us found that at that worked. Okay, that's pretty resounding, yes, so far. I don't know, not sure, that's fine. It is quite a subtle thing, especially when we're just with five breaths. Um, but you'll find when you're working with clients, especially in the free state, it's very, very um, useful to, um, to have that. And we'll do some more work on that next, um, next week. Okay, this chart's available. Diana just looks like she shared it in the, in the um, chat. It's also available online and it'll, the, all the slides will be available on the um, on New Energy Work in the course that we're setting up that we've already set up called um, Shiatsu and Mental First Aid. Okay, and all the video recordings and other resources will be there, including some links. Okay, excellent. So here we go. So we've just got a little bit of time left, uh, just 10 minutes, just to discuss breathing Shiatsu breathing and shiatsu and TCM. Just want to go over the basics with you. And again, next week we'll look at it in practice, kind of things to look out for when you're working clinically with your clients. So here we go. I've got, a, I think I've got a poll for you. Yeah, here we go, look, here we are. This I thought this would be a fun thing to do, just to finish off the webinar. And that is, which element do you think is most closely connected to Dantian breathing? Okay, if you had to choose one of these elements, which one would it be? Okay, and there's all the five elements there. Okay, so let's just see what the group think. Which element do you think most closely connected with Dantian breathing, if you had to choose one? Let's make sure I've got them all in. Yes, I have. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay, look at that. Earth was way off out of the starting block there. Amazing. Interesting. Look at that. You notice that metal, you'd, you'd think that would be like, <laughs> you'd think that would be the winner straight away because it's to do with the lungs. It's actually trailing there and no one has clicked wood. Oh, it's feeling really left out there. Okay. I find that's, that's a little bit surprising, but let's have a look and see. Um, Let's have a look and see. And I've got an experiment for you as well. I've got one more experiment to do today, um, which is what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into belly breathing and I'm gonna get you to tune into the strength of your lungs, the tightness of your abdominal muscles, the freedom of your diaphragm, the emotional flow that you've got with the breathing and the condition of your lower abdomen, okay? Interestingly enough, and we'll see um, and I've got a poll to check that um, 
with you, okay? So it's the lungs, the abdominal muscles, the diaphragm, emotional flow, and the condition of your lower abdomen. So let's go into the exercise and, uh, and we'll, ch we'll check it, okay, as we do it. We'll just do three breaths and we'll check it and see. Here we are, okay? And this is a very useful self-awareness exercise because next week when we do the treatments, we're going to be doing a series of different checks in the protocol, uh, which link directly with the meridians. So um, this is kind of like a self-awareness exercise. So here we go. We're going to do the belly breathing. Just straightforward belly breathing. Just doing a few breaths. Okay, so now we're going to check and see how strong, how, how do your lungs feel? Do they feel like the whole lung air is quite strong, bringing the breath in? Okay, what about your, abdom your abdominal muscles? Are they too tight or do they feel okay? Are they allowing your abdomen to expand? Nicely with the breath. So we've got the lungs, the abdominal muscles. Okay, good. Now what about the diaphragm? Tuning into your diaphragm. Any blocks there as you contract the diaphragm? and relax it on the out breath. Okay, now thinking about your emotional flow, so do you think there's anything emotional that's blocking your breathing? Okay, and then going back into the lower abdominal breathing, how does your lower abdomen feel in terms of the way that the breath's moving? Okay, so we've got the lungs, the abdominal muscles, the diaphragm, emotional flow, and the strength of the lower dantian. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to run the poll. We've only got a few minutes left. So let's just see how we get on with this. Um, let's just be fascinated to see how, uh, see what you, what you say, what you, what your result, what the results are. Okay, so if you tune into your breathing pattern, if you wanted to work on one of those things to improve your breathing, which one would it be? Okay, and I'm going to run that poll now. Which one of those five would you work on to improve your breathing? Okay, so let's see. Which one of those things do you think you'd like to work on the most? Okay, look at this. You've obviously got, everyone's got obviously an awesome lower dantian here. That's what, that's the message this poll is giving us. <laughs> okay, now look at that. We've got diaphragm and we've got emotional flow there making up 65% of the votes, okay? So let me show you this last slide. We'll go out and we've just got five minutes to go out on it. And here's um, some, it's not a complete list, but this is the, some of the most common meridian and element associations that we have with the breathing pattern. And this comes from Chiazzo and TCM theory. Okay, so I'll just run through this and we can expand on it next week. Okay, so we've got, and I've, what I've done is also I've put, uh, put in the most common local points that are used there are a lot of distal points as well, um, and we can do all kinds of stuff, but this is like the most basic stuff that probably gets used the most, okay? Lung one is a great point for opening up the lungs and descending the lung chi. So if you wanted to work on your lungs, there's 11% of you saying that, I would really recommend <coughs> working on lung one. Just the thought of it's making me cough. <coughs> Expanding wind, and there we are, look, we've got spleen and stomach, that's your earth element. Stomach 25, that's related directly to the abdominal muscles, by the way. There's also lots of other things involved in uh, at the earth elements, as I'm sure you know, um, to do with grounding and things like that. 
Um, but we've also got the heart protector. This is a fire element directly related. Obviously, we've got the fire element that's related to the freeze response as well. Um, but the heart protector is directly related to the diaphragm because it's part of the Jue Yin um, in the six divisions. And it's directly related to the diaphragm. Heart protector six is a good point. It connects right through into the middle burner there from the heart protector meridian. And then we've got the liver. Now, I, would, I was surprised if we could get more votes for the liver because the liver is often involved when we've got diaphragm stiffness. It's a very, very big um, uh, structure in the body that's governed by the liver and the heart protector together. Um, and also liver 13 and 14 run up through um, the costal regions and they're often involved when we get liver stagnation blocking the, the breathing function. Favorite Favourite local points, 13 and 14. Obviously, there are lots of distal points as well. And then we've also got, of course, the kidney. We've got, um, yeah, not many people voted for that. That's because you're all awesome shiatsu practitioners who've developed, developed their lower hara over all these years. I'm sure that's what, what's happened. Um, so, yeah, and that, so if you've got fatigue there, basically, if you've got fatigue, you've got weak, low energy, and then you get a failure of the failure to grasp the lungs for the chi. Um, okay, and then favorite points, kidney 27, great for connecting the lungs to the kidney, to the lower burner. And of course, we've got REN4 and REN6, which form the lower abdomen. We've got loads of distal points as well. So that's just an introduction to linking the meridians with the breathing, which is again, another level of sophistication that we've got of, sh of shiatsu practitioners. Um, Okay, so we've got Tina and Shudaba. Not really questions, these are more. Um, uh, all right. Okay, Tina found it the other way. Um, yeah, I've got Shudaba here being in class, trying to listen, engage as well as breathing. Yeah, sure, that's absolutely right, because Tina found it the other way around. But that's okay, anything can happen with energy work exercises. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so that's been a packed hour. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I've had a lot of fun. I've been absolutely, you know, had so much fun working with you. And um, I hope that's been useful. And it's basically, that's, that's a main structure there. Um, I'll just put the review up. So just did a quick review of part one. If you missed it, I really recommend you have a look through it. It's fascinating stuff, stuff that I didn't know about until a few weeks ago uh, when I did the research for this project that we're doing at the moment. Uh, we looked at the protocol that we're developing basic belly breathing, and then we went many steps further with lower abdominal breathing, Dan Chen, energetic breathing, using all of those added um, things to boost it, like visualizations and all the rest of it, re relaxation. Linking polyvagal theory with breathing rhythm, very useful, especially if you've got clients in the free state. And then we looked at the meridian associations, the common local points that are used to regulate the breathing. Um, and the key acupressure points. And that's it. And we've, we're, all, we're all finished. So let's have a look, quickly look at the chat and see how we're doing. Um, what's the answer to number seven? I don't know what that one, I don't know what Charlotte really means by that. What's the answer to number seven? I'm not sure what she means. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna have a quick look back at the chat. Okay, right, good, all right. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you, hopefully see you next week. We're gonna have two other people in here. Um, oh, which element is... Uh, we've got the metal element, the earth, fire, wood, and water there. The heart is also, also involved anyway, so. Oh, look, it's just... Just completed the mental first aid course today. <laughs> Brilliant. There we go. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll see you next week. We're going to have Shakura and Kat in the studio, hopefully in the, uh, in the on the futon, doing some more camera work. We're going to do a simulation of only putting the whole protocol together and bringing all this stuff in and showing how you can go even deeper with guided imagery and um, using the breath. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, Diana, for looking after the chat. We'll put heart in the chat here. And uh, yeah, see you next week. Oh, here we are, Charlotte. Which element linked to the Dantian breathing? All of them do. That's the thing. 
Um, they all they all contribute different things, as we can see here. But we'll go into it more next week, Charlotte. Okay, <laughs> got to go. See you later. Bye. <laughs>